Hello Internet! Today I'm going to be unraveling this thrifted sweater into yarn. I'll go over the entire process, and I'll also identify some key features of this garment that made it a prime candidate for unraveling. Your number one priority when picking a garment to unravel is maximizing continuous usable yardage. Pick a garment that is made out of a yarn that you will actually use based on the color, the thickness, the feel of it, and the fiber content, which is usually available on the garment's tag. Also make sure your fabric is in good shape before you actually buy the garment. You want to find a fabric that doesn't have any holes, or large stains, or weird smells. You want fabric that isn't pilling, and that hasn't been felted at all. One final thing to look out for, and this is really important, is what these seams look like on the inside. And hopefully they look something like this. This means that the fabric hasn't been cut when the seams were made, and that each panel was knit and shaped individually rather than cut from a larger piece of fabric. And you can further confirm this by just taking a closer look at what the edge looks like. If you're a knitter, you know that this is a normal looking knit edge and that the yarn will be continuous from row to row. The main thing is you just don't want any cutting to have happened at this edge because if there has been cutting, then you will get one piece of yarn for every row and that won't be good continuous yardage. So this is an example of a quote-unquote bad seam. You can see that the seam here is overlocked, which means the edges of the fabric were trimmed to size and are now encased in the overlock stitches, and this is something we do not want. Once you have located a suitable knitwear garment to unravel into yarn, the first thing you want to do is make sure it's really clean. So if you pulled it out from the back of your closet, you probably don't have to wash it again, but if you bought it from a thrift store, you definitely want to send it through the washing machine at least once. Usually I like to start unraveling at the underarm seam that goes down the side of the garment. You can take a seam ripper or a pair of small scissors and locate this crochet chain stitch and just snip it very carefully because you don't want to snip the actual, the actual knitting. And then you'll be able to pull it apart a little bit. Once you've got a decently sized hole it should sort of unravel by itself and then you can go to the other side where you don't see the crochet chain stitch and just give that thread a little bit of a yank and that should just very quickly take the garment apart. I personally like to hold on to this little bit of yarn that was holding the seam together because then I can use this to tie the skeins of yarn together when I'm washing them. That's about all there is to unpicking the seams. You just clip the thread, yank on it, and the panels come apart. You're going to want to do the same thing for every seam of the garment, so you have just individual panels that are all detached from each other. Once you've fully deconstructed your garment and you are left with these flat knit panels, you can go ahead and start unraveling these panels. You will probably have edges that look like this. That is, no live stitches, and one little end over here, and another little end over here. And it's probably really confusing, like, why there's two ends up here when this is the top of the knitting, but if we take a look at this side, you can actually see that there's a crochet chain stitch at the top, and this is how the stitches were bound off on the machine. You can take your scissors or seam ripper, and again, very carefully clip one of the chain stitches. And then again, you can go to the other side and just start yanking and then you'll be left with these live stitches at the top. And just make sure that you get both of these ends to come off, otherwise when you're unraveling they will get in the way, so I'm just actually going to clip that off completely and yank a little bit more. And now we've got this live piece of yarn. And we can go ahead and just keep unraveling this whole panel. Once you've got your garment fully unraveled and all your yarn skeined up, it is time to give your yarn a bath. I recommend tying your yarn in at least four places with a figure eight knot. That keeps everything together really well so when you're soaking it, it doesn't tangle on itself and turn into a gigantic mess. It stays in this nice, neat skein. So anyway, what you need to give your yarn a bath is your yarn, a large pot to hold all the yarn, some cleaner, and then just add warm water and let it soak. 
the way I rinse this yarn is pretty much a three-step process. The first step is just soaking in hot water for about 15 minutes and dumping that water out and checking to see if there's excessive particles or if the water's cloudy or if there's any color bleeding and repeating that until the water is clean. The second step is pretty much the same thing, but using warm water, a little bit of agitation, plus some cleaner like soap or shampoo or wool wash or laundry detergent. And again, just rinsing until the water is clean. And the third step is just a quick cool water rinse, no soaking, and that should get the rest of the cleaner out and any lingering particles. After the yarn is nice and clean, I wring it out really well and then hang it up to dry outside. And here is the finished yarn. This yarn has been through quite a lot recently. So the last step is to skein everything up for storage and optionally count the yardage. To count yardage, what you probably want to do is find one of the smaller skeins and calculate yardage for that skein, then use its weight to estimate the yardage for the entire batch of yarn. I know that my yarn swift is 61 inches around. That means if I count each individual yarn strand, I can multiply the number of yarn strands by 61 to get total inches, and then divide that number by 36 to get yardage. So I did that, and I ended up with 270 yards for about 50 grams. And then I weighed all of this yarn, and it came out to 440 grams. And knowing that 50 grams of that is 270 yards, I did some math and ended up with 2300 to 2400 yards of yarn. And there you have it. The entire process from start to finish, from turning a thrifted sweater into some recycled yarn.